In a purse sen the top of the net is floated at the ocean surface and the bottom of the net has weights attached that pull the walls of the net downwards. The bottom of the net has a wire threaded through it which is pulled and tightens the net like a purse trapping the fish inside. The net is then pulled in toward the boat and the catch is either pumped or lifted out with small nets or the whole net is brought aboard. The size of purse sen nets can be varied, depending on what species is being targeted. The purse sen method of fishing is very selective as it usually targets only one species at a time. This means that there is very little impact from purse sen fishing on other marine species. Purse sen nets are set near the ocean surface and do not touch the sea floor, so their impact on the marine environment is also very small. In some countries, purse sen nets may be set around a floating object such as ocean debris. These objects are called fish aggregating devices, FADs, and large numbers of fish are often attracted to these. This means that if a purse sen net is set around a FAD, many other marine species may be caught. The use of FADs for purse sen fishing is not allowed in Australia. Yellowfin tuna is found worldwide in tropical and subtropical waters, and is common throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. It is a pelagic fish, and is among the larger of the many types of tuna. It is smaller than a bluefin and big eye yet generally larger than a blackfin, skidjack, or albacore. Yellowfin are distinguished from other tuna mainly by the crazy shape of their second dorsal and anal fins, which are bright yellow and extend out far from their bodies as long curved skinny fins. In mature fish these can extend quite a ways and reach back almost to the tail. Yellowfin tuna will commonly reach maturity at around 2 years and 40 inches, and will weigh under 100 pounds. The fish live a relatively short lifespan of 5 to 10 years, but can reach upwards of 300 pounds in that span. They are certainly a much better prize than the blackfin they are often caught with. Yellowfin tuna, also known as Thunus albacares, is a species of tuna found in the open waters of the tropical and subtropical oceans worldwide. They are a large fish, typically reaching weights of around 100 to 150 pounds, but can grow up to 400 pounds. They have a dark blue back and silver sides, with a yellow fin and tail. They are a highly sought-after species for sport fishing, as well as for commercial fishing. Yellowfin tuna are fast swimmers and can be found in both pelagic and coastal waters, typically in schools. They are known to be opportunistic feeders, consuming a variety of prey such as squid, crustaceans, and small fish. In the Costa Rica North Pacific coast the best time is usually between August and October, but it can be fished throughout the year. Yellowfin tuna is a favorite of fishermen. In the Central Pacific coast it can be found every month of the year, especially from June to September. In the southern zone its best season coincides with marlin and sailfish, but it can appear at other times of the year. It has a strong tendency to form concentrations, more by size than by species, that usually occur in waters near the surface. The schools can be integrated by one or several species, even Costa Rica are observed along with dolphins or floating objects and debris. This tuna is quickly identified by presenting a dorsal, pectoral and long back fin. The dorsal fins are barely separated by a small space. The first one has 11 to 14 spines and the concave, second dorsal and back margin are similar, with the distal profile also concave and both followed by 7 to 10 pinions. Fish larger than 120 centimeters are sexually mature and their age corresponds to about 24 to 36 months, but varies by region. They reproduce throughout the year in the central areas of their distribution. The spawning period is most intense when the temperature rises in the northern and southern hemispheres, respectively. In the Atlantic Ocean two breeding groups were detected, one that spawns between the months of May and August in the Gulf of Mexico and another that does so from July to November in the Caribbean Sea. In Costa Rican waters, spawns twice a year, releasing several million eggs that, like the larvae, spend a short period as part of the pelagic communities. According to her size, a female releases 5 to 60 million eggs a year 6. Eggs, like larvae, are pelagic, spherical, transparent and...
The Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, IOTC, has today published its scientific committee report, detailing the results of the long-awaited yellowfin tuna stock assessment. The results show that, despite having had a stock recovery plan in place for five years, the stock is still overfished and subject to continued overfishing. A substantial catch reduction of at least 30% is now essential to save the Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna stock. The EU's industrial distant water per send fleet is the largest contributor to overfishing and has been for as long as the stock has been overfished. Other IOTC member states like Oman have compounded the problem by dramatically increasing their catch since 2019. Based on projections in the scientific committee report and the results of the new stock assessment, the first of its kind since 2018 a sustained 30% catch reduction is necessary to bring about a reasonable likelihood of stock recovery by 2030. This reduction would necessitate a new catch limit of roughly 301,000 tons, almost 130,000 tons less than was caught in 2020. In recent years, there has been significant uncertainty surrounding the management advice issued by the IOTC, due to critical errors within the scientific committee's stock projections. These errors prevented any new management advice being issued in 2021. In the face of such uncertainty, a precautionary approach should have led to IOTC contracting parties significantly reducing their fishing pressure. Instead, another revision of the stock rebuilding plan was adopted in June 2021 which is unlikely to achieve the recovery of yellowfin tuna in the Indian Ocean. IOTC contracting parties will have the opportunity to rectify this later this year at the 26th session of the IOTC in May. As highlighted at COP26 during the EU Ocean Day, the ocean plays a crucial role in mitigating climate change. It produces 50% of the Earth's oxygen and absorbs excess heat, while locking away and storing carbon. Damaging practices like overfishing destabilize the essential ecosystems that support all life on Earth. Now that we have a new, more reliable stock assessment for Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna, it is clear that a catch reduction of at least 30% from 2020 levels is needed to be confident in our chances of stock recovery. A 50 to 50 chance of saving the stock is not good enough, no better than a coin flip on yellowfin recovery. Healthy oceans need healthy fish populations. In 2015, the IOTC Scientific Committee recommended that catches be reduced by 20% to allow the stock to recover. One. Since then, catches have increased by more than 25,000 tons, totaling more than 430,000 tons in 2020. 2. Concerningly, the new stock assessment has determined the maximum sustainable yield, MSY, of the yellowfin stock to be some 54,000 tons less than previously thought, highlighting the growing impact of overfishing. Amir Shahid, Indian Ocean Tuna Manager at WWF, said, the IOTC assessment quantifies just what has been lost while members delayed action by blaming lack of science. Now it is crystal clear. Strict conservation and management measures are urgently needed to allow Indian Ocean Yellowfin to recover within the next decade. This is the only way parties of the IOTC can meet their commitments to sustainable development and biodiversity goals. Martin Perfs, Managing Director of IPNLF, said, now that the science is clear and we know that catches need to be reduced by almost a third, the only remaining barrier to effective conservation is political will. Decision makers must put aside greed and short-term gain to ensure the long-term survival of this important stock. The food security and livelihoods of coastal communities should always surpass the interests of profit-driven operations by distant water fishing. Tuna fishing nations hammered out a temporary plan to stop overfishing of Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna, Funnus albacares, at a June meeting, but fatal weaknesses may sink it, experts say. The highly prized yellowfin stock is a few years from collapse, scientists warn. Yet, distant water fishing parties like the European Union and coastal states have struggled to agree on how to reduce catches. The latest round of negotiations at the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, IOTC, centered on proposals by the EU and the island nation of Maldives. Members adopted a revised version of the Maldives plan after a week of hectic talks that concluded on June 11. A stock crash will hit EU-dominated commercial fisheries and endanger a vital nutrition source for two dozen Indian Ocean coastal states, including some of the world's poorest countries like Madagascar, Somalia and Yemen. The broader ecosystem impacts of wiping out a species whose habitat sprawls across the entire western Indian Ocean are unknown. 
While the Maldives put forth a more ambitious plan than the EU, the one finally agreed on is less so. The rebuilding plan is toothless and weak, said Umair Shaheed, WWF's Indian Ocean tuna manager. It was watered down quite drastically. The Maldives proposed a 35% reduction for distant water fishing members like the EU that caught a quarter of the Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna catch in 2019, the largest share for any member. This was slashed to 21%. Considering vessels controlled by EU companies but flagged to other nations, the bloc caught about 115,000 tons of yellowfin in 2019. Over four decades, EU-controlled boats have harvested nearly 4 million tons of yellowfin from the Indian Ocean, a third of total catches. Unlike the EU's plan that sought reductions based on fishing gear type, the Maldivian proposal imposes restrictions on individual parties based on their development status. Developing coastal states will be subject to a 12% cut, while small island developing states, SIDS, and least developed coastal countries will face a 10% reduction in their catches. Apart from the Maldives, there are only three other SIDS in the region, Seychelles, Mauritius and Comoros. European companies ultimately control the Seychellois and Mauritian purse send fleets, a Monga Bay report found. The EU proposal highlighted the growing importance of coastal fisheries and blamed coastal states for the unsustainable fishing levels while vigorously opposing deep cuts to its industrial fisheries. In its plan, the bloc proposed a 20% cut for purse sen, gillnet and longline fisheries, if catches were more than 5,000 tons in 2014 regardless of whether these are developed or developing countries. The EU's Indian Ocean fleet is made up of mostly purse signers. Five coastal states, Indonesia, Iran, India, Oman and Madagascar, raised objections to the new resolution, which means they would not be subject to the updated measures. Taken together, fisheries in these countries accounted for about a third of yellowfin tuna catch in 2019. Barring Madagascar, the remaining four are major fishing nations. Iran has witnessed substantial growth in catches in the past decade, which stood at 58,000 tons in 2019. The other three countries each captured between 30,000 to 37,000 tons that year. Their lack of support is a major blow for efforts to rebuild the stock. Countries like India and Oman oppose the cuts on the grounds that most of their tuna catch is taken by small-scale fishers for subsistence within their own waters. Citing the impact of COVID-19 on their economies, the countries refuse to accept the reductions. Indonesia's objection is linked to a dispute with the IOTC about the accuracy of its reported catches, which would determine its share under the new plan. Madagascar did not favor a 2,000-ton cap, a limit it faces because its catches have historically remained below 2,000 tons. The new plan would narrowly meet the IOTC Scientific Committee's recommendation of keeping total yellowfin tuna catch below 403,000 tons if there is full compliance. But with lower ambition from the EU and five members objecting, this target may not be met in 2022 when the plan takes effect. While the EU has accepted cuts under earlier iterations of the plan, first launched in 2016, the bloc allegedly breached its catch limits in 2017 and 2018. It promised an investigation into overfishing by the Spanish fleet in 2018 and was to present its findings this month. The EU delegation said the analysis is yet A proposal sponsored by Kenya calling for greater restrictions on the use of fish aggregating devices, FADs, was not adopted, with active opposition from the EU, whose purse send fleet is almost entirely dependent on FAD-aided fishing. FADs are known to cause marine pollution and harm fish stocks because they tend to attract juveniles. The removal of juveniles that have not reproduced imperils fish populations and their ability to rebound. While other gear types like pole and line reel in more yellowfin juveniles than adult fish as a proportion of the catch, since purse signers catch more tuna, they harvest more juveniles overall. The failure to tackle fads effectively is one reason organizations like the International Seafood Sustainability Foundation, ISSF, a coalition of seafood companies, scientists and NGOs, could reduce tuna sourcing from the Indian Ocean. The foundation criticized the minimal overall progress for the long-term protection of the region's tuna stocks. It's a sign of the growing pressure on IOTC members to turn the tide on overfishing. The Maldives has a well-developed domestic tuna fishery and is a big exporter of yellowfin tuna. The country is known for promoting sustainable fishing but its market will also be in jeopardy if retailers and buyers boycott Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna.
the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission's inability to come to an agreement on a sufficient reduction in yellowfin tuna catch levels isn't new, but it is particularly disappointing that the Commission failed again this year, given its market is now at stake, said Glenn Holmes from US NGO The Pew Charitable Trusts. At the same time, protracted discussions about yellowfin tuna have led to other critical issues being sidelined, including the overfishing of another tuna species, skipjack, Katsawonis pelamis. Though not in as dire straits as yellowfin, this species was also overfished between 2018 and 2020. There was some incredibly hard negotiating, particularly on the part of the Maldives, and I congratulate them on being able to get a resolution, Holmes said. Unfortunately, it took up way too much time. The current approach of haggling over catch limits for individual species may also be short-sighted, other experts say. We need to look at tunas from a multi-species angle. This fishery is not operating in isolation. These are co-dependent stocks, Shahid said. We need fishing strategies and rules that take into account the impact of one species on another. Without an ecosystem-based approach, it will be very difficult to manage the stocks. But the IOTC's yellowfin tuna woes are far from over. The interim measure is applicable only for 2022. A new stock assessment will take place this year, which will likely trigger a fresh round of negotiations. Banner image, tuna fishing in the Seychelles. Image by Seychelles Nation. Malavika Viawire is a staff writer for Monga Bay. Find her on Twitter, at MalavikaV. Feedback, use this form to send a message to the author of this post. If you want to post a public comment, you can do that at the bottom of the pack. Yet the total global catch has risen by about a third to nearly 450,000 metric tons annually, according to the London-based Blue Marine Foundation Advocacy Group. It estimates yellowfin tuna stocks can collapse, meaning they would go beyond the minimum size needed for recovery within the next five years if the catch is not cut. French and Spanish fishing fleets take the majority of fish, using industrial methods such as purse sen with huge nets that often net juvenile yellowfin yet to begin reproducing. The Maldives wants the yellowfin catch to be cut by 15% from 2015 levels, when IOTC scientists first agreed they were being overfished. The IOTC had last year recommended cutting the catch by 20% from 2014 levels, but rode back in January, saying that was distorted by projections from the 2018 stock assessment. Given that a new stock assessment will not be ready until the end of 2021, the Commission may postpone new measures, according to the Blue Marine Foundation. For a stock that is at risk of collapse, this delay could prove catastrophic, it said in a statement. The European Union proposed a catch reduction of nearly 438,000 metric tons in 2019 to 380,000. Demand for yellowfin is booming as its light meat is widely used for tinned fish and in sushi in North America, Europe and Asia. The global yellowfin market in 2018 was worth $15.8 billion, the second highest value of the seven tuna species, according to a report by the world's largest canned tuna company, Thai Union Group PCL. Greenpeace's McCallum said the overfishing issue had stalled during the COVID-19 pandemic and drastic action was needed now to avoid irrecoverable damage to the species.